Hi, this is Stuart Knockbar with Educated Quest. With me is Franklin Gaglione. He is the Associate Director of Admissions at Lake Forest College in Lake Forest, Illinois, which is only a train ride from the Windy City of Chicago. Lake Forest is like some, some colleges I've seen out here in the Northeast, like Ursinus and Drew University. Um, it's well connected to a city. Um, however, as most liberal arts schools do, it takes some unique approaches to education that I'd like to talk about today. So Franklin, thank you for joining me. Thrilled to be here. Thank you so much for the invitation, Stuart. You're welcome. And what type of high school student would be attracted to Lake Forest versus other liberal arts colleges? You know, such a great question. And I think always can be a challenge at times because Frankly, many liberal arts colleges do many of the same things well. They often promote a more intimate academic experience, close relationships with faculty members and staff, um, a more tight knit sense of community among students. I think a few sort of, at least one major attribute that I think I've really found as a unifier among our student body is that frankly, they're doers. They are students who are really not, un they're unafraid to try something where they could perhaps fail and in an environment where that might feel more challenging for young people. I think they find it quite releasing to come to a place like Lake Forest where they are really encouraged to try things both in and outside of their wheelhouse. Um, additionally, I feel that we are a place in terms of academic profile that um, is both competitive with the most selective institutions nearby like Northwestern and the University of Chicago, but also has a model where we take a very personalized approach in the admission process, such that for all of our test optional applicants, we, we do a required personal interview to really develop a relationship with the student, um, and really can take a personalized approach in the admission process. So um, I like to say there's no one sort of magical form fit of a Lake Forest student, um, but really we find students with dynamic character who are again, uh, not afraid to, to put their best foot forward and try something new. I'm curious, um, what share of, uh, a, an app of the applicant pool opts to interview and not test versus test and not interview? Certainly. So um, we've been test optional since 2005. So while we're no new player to the test optional admission movement, um, frankly, the COVID-19 pandemic has really seen uh, some shifting in terms of how that lays out. Um, prior to the pandemic, we were seeing about 30 to 40 percent of our students applying test optional. So a sizable share, but certainly not overwhelming. Um, in recent years, we've moved to about 60 percent of our students applying without the use of their test scores at its peak, maybe even in in um, year 2020, when we sort of were at the height of the pandemic, that might have even approached 70%. So wow. um, frankly, it's fluctuated quite a bit and it's dipped down from its peak. So in, in truth, we're not quite sure where we will land in terms of, but we, I think we know it's here to stay. And I think the reality is many students and counselors alike have really found it to be uh, not only just a generous thing by the school, but something that really in almost all cases plays to the benefit of the student. We really find that when we take time to get to know students and hear their stories and learn about their attributes, we can really easily identify students who would be a great fit for the campus. And likewise for the student, you can learn a bit more about the college from a personal relationship uh, beyond what just a website would offer. Given the interview as part of the process, would do test scores have less predictive value with you than they might say at um, UIUC or Northwestern? You know, it's, it's hard to compare with other institutions, frankly, so I'm, I'm a little bit hesitant to worry about that too much. Um, but I think for a long time at, at Lake Forest, just the, the way sort of school has been done, we've placed significantly less and less weight on the standardized test score. I would say even prior to the influx of increased test optional applicants, we were already leaning much more heavily on the, the transcript and the composition of the transcript than we were a test score. We, we you know, we would all love to see a photo album versus a snapshot, I think, in terms of understanding something. You, you have a, 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 at least on paper, for somebody who comes from New Jersey or California, you have a very attractive uh, locational proposition. Has, has that influenced a, a change in the geography of the applicant pool and of freshman classes where you get like more of them from outside Illinois and outside the neighboring states? You know, I'd, I'd like to think so. I think it, especially compared to some of our peers, smaller colleges in the greater Chicagoland area, we are certainly the most geographically diverse where among our domestic population, 
um, less than, gosh, like less than 50, maybe less than 45% of our students hail from Illinois, um, with top out of state markets being Arizona, Colorado, Florida, um, and Massachusetts are some of our, just to name a few of our top states outside of Illinois, of but of course, students from Wisconsin and what we call our kind of our collar states are, are well represented. Um, and about 15% of students also are international students. So um, we, we've long held and sort of made a really intentional effort to bring a very geographically spread student body to campus. Um, yeah. And, and do most of them- massively? Oh, I'm sorry. And do most of them consider other liberal arts colleges or are they considering a variety of schools? You know, we find students kind of fall into one of two camps. Frankly, we encounter many students who, frankly, you know, they love the idea of being at an institution in and around Chicago. They think it's an exciting, dynamic city. So on one hand, we have a student who comes to Lake Forest and visits perhaps a, a Northwestern, a U Chicago, a DePaul, a Loyola. Then at the same time, we do have students as well who, of course, are considering us with among like other regional liberal arts colleges. So in, in our academic consortium, that might be Lawrence University, Knox College, McAllister, St. Olaf, Carleton, um, into in Ohio, Denison College of Worcester in some cases as well. So it's certainly a kind of two camps. Beloit would also be one of them. Beloit certainly as well. Yeah, another, another member of the Associated Colleges of the Midwest, certainly. Um, and when students have deposited, what was the reason they mentioned most often for saying yes? You know, I think what really pushes students over the edge is coming to campus and sort of, you know, getting a sense of the community. I think not even just students from the East Coast who I work with primarily, I think many students are frankly, like in a good way, almost off put by how welcoming the community is. This is a what I've been as a non graduate of Lake Forest, I've been so thrilled to sort of discover how intentional this community is, how many people here really have built their careers at Lake Forest on our faculty and staff side. And I think that really shows when folks tour campus, they have meals in the residence hall, they interact with our faculty. Um, people are, are here to stay, if that makes sense. And that sort of energy really does permeate the visiting student and parent experience. Now you handle the East Coast for Lake Forest College. When you talk to um, prospective students and their parents from say New Jersey or Philadelphia or New York City, What's, is there a question that they commonly, or a perception about the Midwest that you, that they throw at you that you might have to refute or you might have to support? You know, that's such a, a fair point. I think, I think many times it's funny because often Chicago is sort of left out of this Midwestern sort of umbrella that's often put under since it is one of these sort of great American cities that is a, a majorly known metropolis. I think Oftentimes, you know, I get fewer questions about sort of the Midwest in general as a result. Um, but even so, as someone who is personally a Midwest transplant, I do feel really comfortable talking about um, why I like living in this part of the country. I'm originally from Middle Tennessee, and you know, though I, you know, it snowed four inches yesterday, and there's a little bit less snow in my hometown than, than <laughs> there is here. Um, I have really found the people of the Midwest to be some of my kind of favorite Americans. They are sort of a an honest, hearty, and warm people that um, are, are really sort of have a, a, a wonderful sense of transparency in the sense that if they they like you, they really like you. And I think um, that is really refreshing to, to folks. Um, and they really sort of enjoy that sort of spirit that isn't always present in lots of other regions of the country, frankly. Are, do students come with academic intentions? Like they hear about a program or they hear about something that Lake Forest offers that maybe other schools don't? That certainly happens. I think Lake Forest, we're fortunate that um, though we are, have really stayed true to our liberal arts roots. One thing that I enjoy about the college is that we also are not unafraid of innovation and welcoming majors that really connect to demands and interests that students have in the future. So um, some of our more popular majors are frankly a little newer. New uh, Neuroscience, for example, was is only a 10 year old major yet it's one of our 10 most popular at the college. Um, we offer majors in business and finance, which are not always seen at many traditional liberal arts colleges that, that attract a certain population of students, but also have some like, in my opinion, kind of fun and quirky programs like a new major in data science, we have a program in museum studies, we have a, a major in um, like in medieval and classical studies that attracts certain types of students. So we definitely um, I think really stay true to our liberal arts roots and want to make sure that both that breadth and depth of learning happens, but definitely have some kind of exciting majors that really curate to kind of a unique set of student interests. 
One of the things that I, I, I read and listened to preparing for this conversation was about some of the pre-health programs. I was blown away by the number that, that Lake Forest has with small colleges. And I thought with, with, with Rosalind Franklin Medical mm -hmm. University, um, there was those nursing partnerships like with DePaul. I was amazed by the number of health-related partnerships. Is there a fair number that walk in pre-med? or walk in pre-health in some way like nursing? Sure, you know, I think what we really have wanted to do is for, I, I think on one hand, you know, kind of expanding options for incoming students is always a plus, especially in what can be a very competitive space, you know, applying for a variety of, of, of you know, health related programs, whether it be medical school, nursing, PA, dental school, et cetera. Um, and so the health professions program, which uh, for those that maybe haven't researched it just yet, is our um, guaranteed admission partnership with Rosalind Franklin University, which is a, a local health professions graduate university about five miles from campus, um, is definitely a, a, a kind of, when I'm speaking of the unique offerings that I talked about a moment ago, definitely kind of fits that criteria. Um, but at the same time, you know, a lot of students, I think, enter college you know, thinking about pre-med or thinking about healthcare, it's one of the largest growing sectors of the labor market um, projected to, you know, hit in the next 20 years as well. Um, but many of them don't really know where to start. So this program both serves students' interests to sort of push them toward things they want, to, you know, they might be interested in, but also it might be a great indicator for a student who thinks they want to go into pre-med, but perhaps isn't really the best fit for them for a variety of reasons. So they're getting a higher level of ex exposure earlier in their undergraduate years, thus, you know, kind of pumping up the resume, if you will, or helping kind of filter them out to programs that might be better fit down the road. So we really think it, it sort of serves multiple masters really well. Are there things that the college offers to alumni that people listening to this might want to be aware of? Like if you, once you have a Lake Forest degree, are there certain things be, being an alum where, where there's a benefit? Certainly. So a few things jump to mind. I'll, I'll first talk about, I, th I think one common narrative that we hear about are perhaps you know, folks who they finish their undergraduate studies and whether they go on to grad school or they enter the workforce, they, they may not feel that what they're doing aligns exactly with what they sort of see themselves doing long-term and may feel that they need support or resources to kind of make a, make a career jump, whether it be like one, five, 10 years out of undergrad. So um, our Career Advancement Center, which you can, I really encourage folks to read about. It's one of the country's most innovative um, for reasons that I can discuss if we'd like. Um, has a program called Forrester Forever, which offers lifetime services and um, career advising, resume assistance, um, connections to, you know, connecting folks in various industries or like sort of lines of work so that, you know, for example, if you, you know, you enter a sales career after you finish your undergrad, but you really see your passions in the nonprofit sector, for example, you can make, you know, there are connections to be had that are going to be a lot more easier and organic than, you know, searching away on LinkedIn and kind of hoping for the best. Um, our development and alumni relation office is also a pretty sort of tireless advocate and a resource for any folks that call in just looking to make connections. Tell me a bit about Lake Forest, Illinois as a community and how the community interacts with your students. Sure. So Lake Forest, the town is sort of at, at face value is frankly a very affluent, safe suburban community of, down, of Chicago. We're about 30 miles from the heart of downtown, about 10, 15 miles from the edge of the city limits. So if you, you know, for example, go to the top of campus, you know, a top high building, you can see Chicago in the distance. But at the same time, it is like a very quaint, friendly suburban community. Um, in many ways, I think it's wonderful that we are not the only show in town in this college in the sense that we don't smother the community, but the community really does come and makes itself present on campus in ways that I think are overwhelmingly positive, whether it be local families that will um, host students from a distance or international students in their homes on breaks or welcome them to dinner just to have a, a kind of a welcoming sort of flair to the community, to folks that attend sports games, plays, concerts, walk their dogs around campus and sort of overall you know, see the upside of having so many young learners and scholars that live in and around the community. Um, the town of Lake Forest, sort of the, our little downtown hub is also just about a five minute walk away from campus that has, you know, a, frankly, a pretty large number of businesses, um, you know, a train stop that goes right into downtown Chicago and other kind of amenities would it, would it, that a student would need in sort of short proximity. So I think it's a really healthy give and take, but at the same time, I actually think it's a plus that, um, 
like the, the town is not defined by the college. The two have, a, I think, a really nice um, independent but symbiotic relationship. Um, how did like the college handle uh, campus life during the pandemic? So um, the pandemic went through kind of a number of phases of, of campus life. So in March of 2020, like most institutions across the country, we ceased all in-person operations. We transitioned all coursework into remote learning, um, which presented some, frankly, some, some severe logistical challenges, A, being international students who their, their borders may have been closed, or B, domestic students with financial insecurity who may not have physically had a place to go. So the first thing the college did is accommodated every single student that needed it. So we actually ended up um, housing a couple hundred students on campus throughout the entirety of the first almost full year of the pandemic before a, a sort of full swath of in-person learning return. Because in the fall of 2020, we um, had an entirely a remote learning semester. So, which of course presented a challenge to our incoming students that those, those first years didn't have a traditional orientation. They didn't sort of have the, you know, the hoopla that we like to give when we welcome students to campus. Um, yet we really worked tirelessly to make sure students felt connected. They felt their professors were reaching them where they are. And we actually, um, after a semester, had a higher rate of retention than we would normally see in a typical semester. So we were really, really fortunate to have built such strong relationships in the admission and enrollment process that they stayed the course with us until they could return to campus. And so in the spring of 2021, we brought about half of our student body back, including most of our, our first year and sophomore students who had had like less of a full in-person experience. Um, fast forwarding to now, we have all students back on campus. We are having all of our, all of most, if not 100, like 95% or above of our classes are in person. Um, and actually, as of yesterday, I learned we have zero active COVID cases on campus. Um, so, so it's been a really sort of masterful experience sort of to witness by our sort of central administration who have invested heavily in an on-campus testing resources, surveillance testing, masks, you know, housing for isolation for students that may be infected, all these sorts of things, to really a campus community that sort of banded together that, you know, complied in massive numbers and, you know, mask requirements for indoor spaces for our COVID vaccination and booster requirement that are both over 97% of the student body. Um, so we, you know, I, you know, we watched our enrollment grow by about 5% during the pandemic. So, um, which, you know, while very, very challenging, we feel so fortunate that we frankly treated people the right way and we took their best interests and care at heart, but still um, had an ear to their concerns and needs. So I'm, I've gone on a little bit longer here, but um, really feel strongly about how well we've served the students in every way that we possibly could during this challenging last couple of years. Did the college have to, have to do anything with like the library or the dining hall or residence halls to make yeah. to accommodate students during that time? So there was a time where, for example, like common spaces in the residence halls weren't, you know, couldn't be used. The library, the dining halls switched pretty much exclusively to to, to go food. So like they would have um, like recyclable or cleanable, in all cases, like cleanable or reusable containers that students could pick up their meals in and then return those items. So we, of course, could think about things sustainably as well. Um, but um, probably, you know, a limited menu compared to what our dining hall normally offers. But luckily, students were a great sport about it. And um, library spaces as well. I think there were some reductions in terms of um, like, like seating capacity in spaces. One thing that we did though is we basically assessed every physical space on campus for new like sort of person maximums to accommodate, you know, required distancing and whatnot. So it was definitely sort of almost re-engineering the physical spaces of a college for a couple of years. And so now when we are, have really kind of seen as much of a return to normalcy as I think any, you know, any place has seen in the last couple of years. Oh, so everything's pretty much back to where it was pre-pandemic. For the most part, we still do require masks in indoor spaces, but we've really like loosened up a lot in terms of like ability for events to run. You know, most spaces have returned to their normal capacity. So there's still, I think, lingering effects that um, we will continue to monitor to this spring. But overall, I mean, a, a really marked improvement in terms of the student experience, I think, from uh, where we were a year ago, for example. Um, one of the things that's really impressed me about Lake Forest is how the college uses Chicago. And um, can you, you want to talk a little bit about that? And I'm curious, what I'm curious about is because of the location, because of the programming, how, how often will a student go into Chicago typically? Yeah. 
So we are definitely unique, sort of uniquely fortunate to have Chicago where we do. Of course, there are many other great institutions that have a major city in their backyard, but I've been pleased at how sort of intentional we are about incorporating Chicago. Even during new student orientation, we have Chicago Day where we take the entire first year class on the train into Chicago together in one giant train ride, which is endlessly entertaining to watch. But what we really want is for, uh, because we have such a large out of state population, international population, we want all students to feel empowered to utilize Chicago kind of on their own terms from as soon as they arrive on campus. Um, to your specific question about how often students are going into Chicago, I think the beauty is that it can vary quite a bit. I think many students sort of, um, they find themselves inclined to want to go adventure in Chicago. Um, so you, you have some students that might be going every week, might be going twice a week. You might also have students that are really committed to the sort of campus life and really enjoy that, particularly in some cases, some of our students might be maybe live a little closer to campus. Um, they may go a little less often, maybe a couple times a semester. But I think what's so great is that the variety of usage is just so strong. You can you can have an internship, you can, you know, go meet with someone for coffee who's in your field of interest. You can go to a Cubs game, you can go to the Art Institute of Chicago, you can even go find a cool cafe and just get out of campus for a little bit if you you want a little break from that as, as we all do from time to time. So it definitely, I think, serves kind of every student's interest level, but with, with a lot of different ways that it can be beneficial. Very last question, are they Cubs fans or White Sox fans? <laughs> you know, good question. I think um, it's honestly pretty split. I would say we maybe have a few more Cubs fans than Sox fans. It's way easier to get to Wrigley Field um, than the Sox Stadium from campus. It's actually like only a one train transition. So you can get from, from campus to Wrigley in like maybe 35 or 40 minutes between the, the Metro and the, and the CTA, the L train. Um, so definitely going like, I know students that will go to like night games for the Cubs in the springtime. So probably a bit more of a Cubs community, but a, but a unified Bear, Bears fan base for sure. The the Bears training camp is about three miles from campus. So we, we see the Bears in Lake Forest all the time. Yeah, they were going to, they, they just leased lands in Arlington Heights with the idea, I think, maybe moving the stadium there. It's very, it would be a long-term play, but it's very controversial to the hardcore Bears fans since the, the city of Chicago actually owns Soldier Field. Um, so, you know, right. there is talk that it could happen, but I think like the you know, this is outside of the bounds of a Lake Forest College conversation, but I, Understood. Think, like, but I don't think uh, their lease and Soldier Field doesn't end for like eight or 10 years. So we won't be seeing the Bears move in the near future, but it could happen. Well, you got it. You have to wonder the more successful the team becomes with a new, they have a new coach on board. You, you, you it'll, it'll be interesting how fans, you know, embrace a successful team and want to keep them where they are. We'll see there the morale is not high for the bear we did not have a, a, a representatively strong season last year so i think they can worry about getting if they can get to the playoffs first then perhaps they can win fans over a little bit more moving away from the bears were lake forest athletics i know sure. that this, i read that's only one of two schools in illinois that plays hockey mm -hmm. um what other sports um have been the you know draw the most interest have had the most success Sure. So, um, I mean, first off, talking about hockey, we're the only and we're the only one in Illinois that has a rink on campus. So we definitely have a unique draw there. Now, our men's hockey team actually made the NCAA tournament for the first time in 2020, which unfortunately was canceled because of the pandemic. But we play in one of the strongest Division Three leagues um, in the country. And our women's team is actually going into the conference tournament as the number two ranked team. So our wow. um, our so our, our hockey programs have done well. Um, our most recent kind of great successor is our football team. Um, they had an undefeated conference title run and went to the NCAA playoffs for the first time in, in eight or 10 years this year. So kind of a, a historic records broken across the board, which has been exciting. And um, I would say those two sports are kind of some of our better attended football, especially in the fall, will probably draw about a thousand fans for every home game. So that's a really great way that the school spirits shows itself. Um, but other sports that have had I think sort of really notable success recently. Um, our softball team is a contender for NCAA tournament pretty much every year. Um, we've also been thrilled to welcome men's and women's lacrosse back to Lake Forest. Um, our very first varsity men's lacrosse game is actually happening tomorrow. Um, the first one since 1994. So we are thrilled to welcome this program back um, and sort of have a rebirth of lacrosse. We actually built a brand new uh, million dollar turf facility back behind our ice rink to accommodate um, these new programs as well. Well, congratulations. It sounds like the college is adding academics. 
it's adding athletics. It's it's always adding um, extracurricular programming. You know, it sounds like this is an institution that's going to raise be raising its profile. You know, I, I really think it has. Even in, this is my fourth year at the college, and it's really been incredible to watch both the, the the physical growth of the campus in terms of like facilities and people, but also the the increased profile. Frankly, um, in my time, we've opened a brand new science center that oh, you know increased classroom and laboratory space by about 100,000 square feet in the fall of 2018. In the fall of 2020, we opened the new Brown Hall that has a new home for our career center and seven other academic departments that added about 50,000 square feet of new academic space. Um, we launched, I think, we, we probably five academic programs, including a new public policy minor that's launching this coming fall. Um, let's see if I'm missing anything else here. And then enrollment has grown at, at a, a a good but not too good rate, if that makes sense, because we do want to keep the faculty and student ratios where they are. We do believe in sort of the instant experience, but overall, it's been wonderful that as many colleges of our size have really struggled, have, you know, you know, they've sort of not been able to, they've retreated rather than advancing forward. It's been great that we've been able to continue to do these things. Much of it is on the back of, inter you know, not only strong enrollment, but very generous alumni and friends of the college, because all these things that we've been built, that have been built, have been done entirely on the backs of um, generous alumni giving and without any debt or extended sort of financial insurance like that. So it's kept the college very whole in terms of its finances. Um, and the profile has paid off. Um, I'm not one to sort of tout rankings too much, but when we uh, when we were when I started at Lake Forest, we were ranked, I believe, number 97 or 98 in the you know, U.S. News and World uh, Liberal Arts College rankings, and we were number 80 this year. So we've we've moved 20 spots in four years, which um, is certainly noticeable in my eye. Do people ask about that when they come? Um, you know, I don't know if the, the thing is, most students that look at us. You know, they don't have the four year view quite the same way I do, but I think um, they definitely take notice of the new things, you know, they when they see two new buildings and over, you know, over $50 million of capital construction in the last five years, when they read about the new majors, when they see the new sports teams, I think, while they don't see it, a number of a ranking change that doesn't maybe connect quite the same way it would with someone who has my longevity. Um, they definitely would notice it perhaps compared to other institutions that you know, if they're visiting, especially liberal arts colleges, they don't have that same growth. Um, I could see how that could differ. One of the things about liberal arts schools that I've encountered over in, the, in years is locations. Um, some schools are very isolated. Other few offer the combination of advantages that Lake Forest has. I've been to some. Um, on the East Coast. This is one in the Midwest. Chicago, as Franklin um, pointed out, is very much an American city that has an amazing history. It is often immune to recession in many industries. It is also a place that, quite honestly, you're never going to run out of things to do. Uh, Franklin, thank you for your time and, and for talking with me today. Likewise. Thanks for having me, Stuart. This was a really fun conversation. Thank you. Thank you.